Welcome back YouTube, Nick and Carrie here with Weekly Gaming Recap. Bringing you all your gaming highlights for the week of March 8th, 2014. 17 times a charm. You damn lie. <laughs> Such a liar. <laughs> Maybe fifth time's a charm. No. Third. Two. Sure. It's not three. I don't know. Two. Whatever. Fat it. So what did you play this week? I went retro. Whoa. Hey. Should I turn Back on the up. lights? Beep, beep. Back up. <laughs> Put on some big shades? No. No. So, you have me talking about... I, I had you talking about something? Well, in the stories last week... Uh-huh. Which I don't we pick for you. We were talking about Space Command. Uh-huh. So, I started to play that again. Space Command. Not Space Command. Space Colony. Space Command. Space Colony. <laughs> I can't Space even say the name Space Command. <laughs> Space colony, so with the hot tubs. Yes. Okay. And the quirky characters. So I started playing that again mm -hmm. on PC, and then I picked up Final Fantasy VI on my PlayStation. And Not seven, six. Six. Not the five. Best one. Yes. Six. After five, but before seven. Correct. Before Cloud and the Buster Sword. Correct. And the weird train and the CG that's kind of awkward. Yes. Guys with the weird body proportions. <laughs> and the squares for hands. Yes. Six. So who is in six? Uh, the bad guy is Kafka and Emperor Gastal. Mm -hmm. Gaston? Gastal. Bless you. Gastrointestinal. <laughs> Go away. Uh, the protagonist, well, there's a lot of them, but um, Tara is the main one, and mm -hmm. the story kind of revolves around her. Then there's Locke, Celis, uh, Sabin. Edgar, Gaw, Shadow, Edgar Wright? Realm, no, Strago, Shaun of the Dead. Let's see what else. Who am I missing? I don't know. You were playing it, not me. Seltzer, uh, Sitzer. Seltzer. Not Seltzer. Seltzer Sets water. Seltzer. Hmm. I think that's mainly it. Whole bunch of people. I might have, I might have forgotten. Yes. All 8 bits tall and 8 bits wide. Yes. All glorious. Actually, not really, because you're playing it the PlayStation 1 version on the PlayStation 3. Is that right? Well, no, it never came out for the PlayStation 1. So it says that it's a PlayStation 1 classic, but it never came out for the PlayStation 1, to my knowledge, that I remember. I played it on Super Nintendo, and I played it on GTA. <laughs> G or GBA. <laughs> I'm thinking. You played Final Fantasy on Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> no. GBA, Game Boy Advanced. Game Boy Advanced. Game Boy Advanced, not Advanced. It was Advanced. I believe it was Advanced <laughs> for the time, but it's Game Boy Advanced. I like Advanced with the D. <laughs> I, I see that. <laughs> I'm going to say you're, you're wrong. You're going to look it up, aren't you? Because it's a PlayStation Classic. Which doesn't mean it necessarily had to come out here. Well, but that's your point right there. It didn't come out here. But that doesn't mean it... You said, it. to my knowledge, it never came out. You said never. You didn't specify differences of... Yep. Final Fantasy VI. PlayStation. Told you. When did it come out? It would have come out... After five, but before <laughs> seven. Uh, on what platform? PlayStation 1. That's the one we're talking about. North America, 1999. Yeah, I don't remember that. Booyah. They won't put it as a PlayStation Classic unless it actually came out for the PlayStation. See, the, the plane doesn't agree with you. That's why it's called That's what he's PlayStation. drawing you out. PlayStation. Like Nintendo. Anyway, that's what I've been playing. Okay. That's it. It's what about your uh, your other thing you've been playing, the Genius People? Evil Genius Online? Evil Genius Online. It's just a Facebook game. You've still been playing it, like a whole lot. No, not a whole lot. It's the only really Facebook game that I play right now, so it just seems that I'm playing it because it's the only one that I have on Facebook. Well, that's still a lot <laughs> more than zero. <laughs> you got zero, and then you got played it. 
Well, that one I can play with my friend as opposed to the Evil Genius on Steam. You can't really... It's not multiplayer or anything, so you just play yourself. You didn't play anything on uh, 3DS or anything like that this week? No, not this week. Okay. No. Okay, that's it? That's about it. And you? Um, I started to play more Killzone, Killzone. but then we got Street Fighter Cross Tekken for the Vita for free. Yep. Thanks to PlayStation Plus. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started a kind of infinite battle mode they have on there. And I'm up to 28 consecutive wins just nice. against the computer. Um, so I haven't been able to switch because I keep not losing. <laughs> so I keep <laughs> progressing forward. And I, it's kind of gotten to the point where I want to see how far I can take it. So I kind of want to look up, um, it, you, there's achievements for like one, the first one you win, and I think five and maybe 15, and I want to see like, is there more or should I just quit now? Like, I don't, yeah, really, care, point of, I don't really care about the achievements, but I just want to see like, is there, is am there I really close to like another one? Or, or yeah. yeah. So um, if you're already halfway there, you might as well go for right. it as opposed to, no, there's nothing. So why do I keep going? Right. Or I, I well, I mean, I could quit and actually start playing the story mode. Mm-hmm. Um. But it's kind of neat. Uh, it is a really good fighter for the PlayStation Vita, which, if I remember correctly, is also cross-play, so you can play with people on the PlayStation. Oh, okay, cool. And even in the infinite battle mode, it tells you, like, do you want to leave your Wi-Fi open while you're playing, and then people can, like, challenge you? So oh. you can kind of practice, and then if somebody can be like, hey, I want to play you, that'll just, you know, yes, no, do you want to do it? Um, I left mine off just for now, because I, I just, at, when I started it, I just wanted to see, like, no, I just want to practice and see how well I'm doing on the Vita. Right. Um, the controls are pretty responsive. I have a little problems pulling off moves. Um, sometimes he'll do moves because uh, I just picked uh, Ryu and Ken. Just, mm-hmm. You know, because I figured, well, if I'm going to practice, I might as well just pick you know two gen- the generic Street Fighter characters that I can do moves for. Um, but sometimes he'll go into like this weird like button press move where like I press a bunch of buttons and then he'll just do like this really long combo and I don't really know. I wasn't trying to do that. I was like, you know. Uh, Sounds like me when we're playing fighting Small games. punch, small punch, medium, strong punch, strong kick. And it's like all of a sudden he's just beating the crap out of the guy. I'm like, wow. And then I put it in again and it doesn't do it. So I don't know like what button press it missed. Or maybe I pressed two buttons. Um, <laughs> it's pretty responsive, so... It, Sounds like what I do in, in fighting games. <laughs> it's, it's good. Uh, I just have a little problem with the Vita analog stick sometimes. Registering what I'm actually trying to do versus what happens on screen. Uh, played more Battlefield 4 with my friends. Of course. A new patch came out this week, which supposedly fixed a bunch of stuff. But um, I was already in TeamSpeak with Drew, and he was playing, and... He was still cussing that everything was broken. So despite what you think you fixed dice, you didn't fix it, apparently, according to Drew. And <laughs> according to his friend Joe. He has way higher level than I do, and he knows all the weird random intricacies, so I would believe him yeah. over. But it does make good um, listening, too, because he's very animated. <laughs> yeah, he's fun to listen to. Yeah. <laughs> He's fun when he's angry. It's kind of like the uh, angry video game. He gets angry a lot. Then. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of expletives. Very passionate about it. Very that. colorful. <laughs> and just, that's about it. Just waiting for Titanfall, which is this week. Yes. It's going to be awesome. Uh, before we get to news, snippets. Snippets. Little things that weren't really full stories. Uh, Twitch beat Pokemon. So Twitch plays Pokemon's done. They finished it. Uh, 17 days, 7 hours, 45 minutes. Uh, they're now moving on to Pokemon Crystal. So Didn't we talk about that last it's week? It's not ended. I don't remember. That's why I put it in here. I'm pretty sure we talked about that last well, week. Well, it's done. It's done again. Watch Dogs is going to be here May 27th for PC and both current and last gen. Wii U, however, is still delayed, unfortunately. And the internet freaked out because the graphics look like garbage. Bless you. Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> um, whether it's true or not, whether the trailer was composed of last-gen footage versus the footage we've seen at PAX and everything that looked really awesome, mm-hmm. um, they said that they haven't downgraded it, but the internet picked apart that trailer like a freaking turkey on Thanksgiving. So, <laughs> I, you know, 
I can only tell you what I see, and uh, it looks worse. Sorry. I, Doesn't maybe look you the same. Go back and, you know, maybe you put the wrong footage in. I don't know. Okay. But there is eight player free roam now, so there you go. But probably not on the Wii. Give U. and take. The awesome skateboard game that I loved, Ali Ali on the Vita, is coming to the PC, Mac, and Linux. So I suggest you buy four controllers for your PC because you will break three of them. It's hard. <laughs> Sony is stopping aftercare support in Japan for the launch models of the PlayStation 3, also the PS1, PS2, and PSP's 1000 and 2000. This kind of reminds me of when Pioneer stopped Laserdisc production in 2009, which was a sad day for me. Sorry. I like my Laserdiscs. You and my brother-in-law were the only two that I think liked those Uh things. No, there was a bunch of people. Hey, look at that. Titanfall got a season pass. Hey, like you didn't think no it was surprise. coming. Everybody freaked Yay! out over that, too. Oh, my God, it's going to season pass. EA, hello. Uh, and I hope you liked the story in The Last of Us because it's becoming a film. So. Interesting. And before we get to news, we want to remind you, check out our friends over at StartSelect.net who have uh, three podcasts now. StartSelect.net show, uh, spooky action something or other, and a secret <laughs> to everybody. <laughs> What a great promo for our friends. Oh my gosh. We it, are so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're not. It's a comic book one. Man, I knew Did it. Did you not look up this stuff I knew before, it right before the show? I, no, because I know it and I, I knew it right before I sat down and now. Do I got to write it down for you? Gone. Old age? I, I didn't write it down and, and I knew it like all week in previous weeks. It's okay, Grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> I need more cortisone and CoQ10 and uh, whatever that crap my dad takes is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. Metamucil, Black seed oil. I don't know. <laughs> Fiber. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping regular doesn't help your brain. What is it like flush the shit out of your brain? It kind of clears you. <laughs> Starts from the top. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know it's spooky action something. I can't think of it. <laughs> That's okay. Andy had trouble saying it on the show, so there you go. I'm not the only one. <laughs> but it's his show. He can say it however he wants to say it. Yeah, but he, Adam asked him what it was, and he had trouble remembering what it was. <laughs> but I, I can't see if they're looking it up, so. Yes, they're just talking. And they didn't die at Pentacon. Okay. They had the, remember I told you there was a problem with the thing and they posted three audio logs from Pentacon? Yes. Yeah. But what does that have to do with dying? One, one of the things was like, are they retrieved the footage after they died. Okay. <laughs> it's like the Blair Witch Project. Alrighty then. On to the stories? On to the stories. Stories. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Go ahead, number one. Number one. Listen, Foyne Pipes. I just wanted to have you say that word. The whole title of the of the game. At Lear Esha and Lodgy? Sure. Is that what it's called? That's not the title of the game, by the way. There's a colon and then a bunch more words. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Colon. Japanese. Japanese. Yeah, no. I translated whatever it was Bless and I you. put it in your story on the on the other thing. But go ahead. Yeah, but it's it's not here, so that doesn't help me. Okay. Keep going. So thanks. Well I, I thought maybe, you know, you'd be resourceful and do it. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, Esha and Lodgy has launched a new trailer just days before the release of the game. Um, the PS3 role-playing game revolves around two protagonists, Esha and Logix, um, two alchemists with two different stories. Um, you can craft lots of items and battle monsters throughout the world. Obviously, crafting um, is going to be a big part since they're alchemists. Um, Wouldn't the, alchemy be a big part? Not crafting. Well, crafting. Crafting. Alchemy. alchemy. Yes. Kind of the same thing. Are they carpenters or alchemists? Kind of both. <laughs> they can make like footstools, magical footstools. <laughs> Would you like this magical chair, sir? Enemy, sit in it. Oh, you blew up. Ah, I'm a carpenter alchemist. 
<laughs> That's a good game. I should make that. Yeah, I like that. Uh, the game is out now already for Europe, um, and it is coming on Tuesday for North America. So tomorrow, yay! Yay! Oh, I got two in a row. Look you did. That. Look at that. So this one, um, I think we're both excited for. I think a lot of people are excited for this one. I, I yes, I I think so. I think so. So City Bound. Wait, wait. No poop blobs, by the way. No poop blobs. That's what he said. He said no poop blobs. I, I know, but once again, you're ruining my damn story. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you're always going to take my tagline. I remembered the poop <laughs> When I read the story. It doesn't make that noise as it goes out. <laughs> 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 uh, Citybound, anyway, is uh, shaping up to be the SimCity game that everybody wanted. So uh, the game is a single player game with no online requirement. Um, the goal is to simulate one whole huge region, not plots of space within a region, um, and to have modding available from the very beginning and not as an afterthought. Um, they also promise that it is going to be affordable, not 60 plus dollars at the release, and it's not going to rely on D uh, DLC to bring the game up. So um, it's looking to be a good game to begin with, <laughs> and then just have DLC as like an added bonus. Um, this is a one-man show, and it is um, still very early in the process, but um, he already has many of the core systems up and running, like the road laying, um, which includes curved roads and stuff. Um, and diag like, like, yeah. Not even like 45 degree angles. It looked like you could just kind of draw like a whatever yeah, well, however, angle you want. Yeah, however your mouse is. So, like me and paint, because I can't draw a straight line. There, yeah, it works out for me. Um, you hold shift. <laughs> straight line every time anyways um it's also got simulation and individual objects um procedural buildings so right now um even if you build weird and wacky roads and stuff like that um your residential and stuff is going to grow within that realm or it's going to um it's going to build up properly, however you have it in, in It there. builds in the space that you give it. Right. As opposed to putting a square and you have two things on the side of it. Well, in the beginning, it might just be a square. If they need more room, they build and fill the space. Right. That's what it sounds like. Right. Um, so the, ga uh, the game plans to release paid alphas and betas at a reduced price. Um, it does have some long-term goals and planned features like terrain, terraforming, vegetation, day-night cycle, season cycle. Uh, data maps and graphs, and citizen inspection with opinion polls and social media. Um, Does it take place on LV-426? No. Because you're a terraformer? No. <laughs> so it does not take place in the Aliens universe? No. So disappointed. <laughs> you said this is not a space game. <laughs> you said it was terraforming. There are terraformers on LV-426. They lost contact with the colony five days ago. It's not. It's not that kind of game. That was last week. <laughs> um, obviously, the game is a long way out, um, but it has roots to really turn into something awesome and something that we basically wanted with SimCity and, and never got. Though EA did get our money. Yes, and a lot of it. Um, so I'm definitely excited to hear about more updates as the game progresses. Cool. Yes. The finale to Rocksteady's Batman Arkham Quadrilogy, Quartet, or Tetralogy, depending on your literary reference, likes, whatever. It's finally coming to an end. Batman dun, dun, dun. Arkham Knight is the last in the Rocksteady Batman. And we already know that the Arkham Knight is not Batman, as most people thought. It is a brand new character that Rocksteady and DC Comics made. Which is pretty neat to make your last game come out with like a brand new character, even though there's weird characters in Batman, like Kite Man and like all those other weird. Like what man? Kite Man. Kite Man, like he wears kite. tights. Kite Man. Oh, kite. Batman already wears tights, so does <laughs> That's all I was asking. I was like, what? Yeah. Uh, the Not title that kite man's will also feature a drivable Batmobile, and hopefully they learn something from the Sega CD game and don't make it suck. The city is going to be five times the size of Arkham City, which is weird. So Arkham City is going to be five times the size of Arkham City. Because the game <laughs> called Arkham City. Arkham City within the Arkham City. Batman. Within the overall Arkham, Arkham City. city. <laughs> the Batman Arkham City map of Arkham City 
<laughs> is five times smaller than the it's Arkham like City scale. in Batman <laughs> Arkham Knight. Yeah. <laughs> we also know that villains Two Face, the Penguin, and Harley Quinn, who is looking way more S and M and less like a jester, sadly. I don't understand why they keep why they keep sexualizing her more and not that they keep I mean ideally for me I would like Harley Quinn that looks like Batman the animated series Harley Quinn with the jester thing and, and whatever. Didn't she wasn't she supposed to be young? No, or younger. She, well, yeah, but she's his. She's the Joker psychiatrist. He turns her to the dark side. Oh, that's right. She's that's Luke. Right. He's I Vader. Forgot. Whatever. Yeah, I forgot. Um, it's been a long time. But yeah, she keeps like corsets and losing more clothes and. and Doesn't have the painted face and. The, she has the painted face. It's white. The just her hat. Yeah. Oh, she's she's the she, she, does, she still. And the it. the costume is like the blue and the red, like, pattern. Hmm. But. I don't know. You don't need to sexualize Harley Quinn. You can just make it look like a jester. But it, and if you pre-order it, you get to play as her. What do you do? The big reveal: no last gen. So I hope you saved some money. Hope you beefed up your PC, bought a PlayStation Four, Xbox One. Yeah, PC, PlayStation Four, Xbox One only, which is good. New gen only. Current gen. We're done with this old last gen crap. Current gen. Current gen. Excuse me. Hopefully, you bought something. If not, you have until when it comes out, which is later this year, which is surprisingly fast. So, be ready for that. It looks pretty neat. It will still have the free-flowing combat and, I'm assuming, bat gadgets. But maybe we'll get a skin pack and make Harley Quinn look like Batman the Animated Series Harley Quinn. That'd be awesome. People on Twitter want that, too, because I put that out there. <laughs> People said, we agree with you. Because you're awesome. That's what it is. Damn right I am. Uh, Destiny of Spirits, the uh, PlayStation Vita only free-to-play strategy RPG game. Bless you. Yeah, I said that on one voice. <laughs> one voice? <laughs> one breath. Uh, is coming to the U.S. on March 25th, according to SEEA producer Kumi Yusa. Just butcher that name. <laughs> Take that Gintu knife. <laughs> Here you go. Sorry. Yeah. Make an easier name. Uh, who wrote on uh, the PlayStation blog, um, basically you collect a ton of spirits to battle, uh, battle others in turn-based battles. Um, the game is location-based, so um, it has social aspects that will allow players to make friends and swap spirits, much like um, a lot of like the mobile games do. Okay. Um, each region is going to get a different set of monsters and creatures. Um, so if you want a certain creature, then you're going to have to find somebody. Or from fly that, there. Yeah. From that region. <laughs> and Expensive buddy up with them. DLC. I had to pay $600 <laughs> for this DLC. What is it? Why yes. to fly a plane to England? Yeah. Basically, uh, you can trade with people that, um, you befriend, but yeah, you have to, you have to be able to trade with them. Um, wow. So during the beta, because they did have a beta, the team was able to reduce the load times, uh, increase gameplay speed, spirit levels, and spirit slots to help the game progress. So um, it looks like they made a bunch of tweaks for the launch. Cool. Kind of sounds Ghostbuster-y. Spirits trading. I don't know. It looks, it, looks, it looks pretty interesting, but I don't know what the whole friend swap thing and well they're trying to add a little nintendo street pass social that's cool yeah i mean we have the hell of a ps vita can technically be a almost cell phone if you have the cellular one like i do not like i have a cell phone card in it but that's just stupid yeah. just use wi-fi so um next is majesco has announced that gardening mama 2 Forest Friends is coming to the 3DS in April. I totally wrote this in wrong when I was looking for the logo. I kept putting Cooking Mama because that's what her face is. It's the lady from Cooking Mama yeah. in a spinoff. I know, but I kept looking for Cooking Mama Forest Friends and I couldn't find it. <laughs> and I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And I was like, oh, she has another Gardening series? Gardening Mama. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. Milking that. Spin-off game. Title. Yes. Or working her to the bone. Yes. The game is a follow-up uh, to the 2009 Gardening Mama 1. 
uh, introduces 50 new horticultural themed challenges. Okay. Like beans and stuff? <laughs> I guess so. Um, so you plant and deliver harvested foods to forest shops to earn new items, decorations, and seeds. Um, the game is also going to feature spot pass capability, rewarding those who find fellow gardening mama gamers with unlockable backgrounds. So meet somebody who else, you know, who's playing and you can get a new background. What I want to know is if they bring this to the Wii U, will it have like gardening tools? And you have to like pretend like you're gardening. <laughs> and you gotta come up to your real gardening tools and like really garden outside with your Bluetooth Wii U tool <laughs> and get points while really gardening. So um, what's interesting is that the Cooking Mama franchise, mm -hmm. there you go, Cooking Mama franchise, Cooking Mama. Uh, has sold over 13 million units worldwide Damn. since its launch in 2006. Um, yet, as we know, Majesco has had some problems with keeping its stock price above a dollar. Cooking Mama is expensive to hire. She doesn't take so. no minimum wage. <laughs> Especially when you want her to go gardening. She's Especially like, you see these hands? These are cooking when, hands only. When you want her to put that, you know, that star in her eye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like $50 million for that star. Yes. You get tattooed right in your face. Oh. Forma 8 looks like a smooth side-scrolling adventure where you start as a little ship probe thingy and have to move through a world <laughs> ship, probe ship probe thingy, thingy. you want to you want to elaborate no, on that ship probe thingy <laughs> you move through an alien world solving puzzles with no weapons at the start you're just gliding around doing your little ship probe thing so. uh you're stuck on an alien planet that looks and feels inspired by a pixel junk shooter that's pretty good pedigree right i mean if you're gonna be inspired by somebody you can do worse than tagline for a different game pixel that i was junk doing right out of there but the game is also described as Metroidvania-like. So you start with no weapons, and then I'm assuming you probably have to backtrack to find stuff, and then you'll get weapons eventually and power up your ship, all that stuff. Uh, over on Destructoid, they also had the same thing I thought, which was the ship movement in the trailer looks a little slow, not quite right, and they'll really have to nail that to get the feeling of the game right because that's off. that's the whole like thing with pixel junk shooter it's like super snappy super responsive mm -hmm. like yeah it has that great art in the background but when you want to go your ship goes you want to go yeah i mean you screw up a lot we but did it's, it's not the fault of the control of your ship it's just the physics based on like you thrust it too fast or whatever right uh the game is coming to pc mac linux wii u ps4 ps vita and ios later this year interesting Get your tiny probe on. <laughs> that just sounds so Space wrong. probe alien world guy. They will space probe you. Uh, speaking of Pixel Junk, Pixel yes. Junk Inc., a.k.a. Pixel Junk 1-6, uh, has been given a new name. Now called Gnome Gnome Galaxy, and I keep wanting to say Nom Nom. It is Nom Nom. Is it Nom Nom? Gnome Nom? They say it weird in the video. I don't care what they say. I say Nom Nom. Because it's om nom nom nom. It's the complete. Nom 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 nom. Yeah. Nom, nom, um, nom. I think they say nom nom. I'm pretty sure. I don't uh, care anyways, what it's they say. <laughs> I say nom nom and I'm right. You're not the game developer, but okay. I'm the game master. <laughs> anyways, it's. Uh, the shut up! <laughs> Just in time for its launch on Steam in Steam Early Access on March 13th. Wow, they really waited to change that name. Yes. Q Games has released a quirky launch video um, where they basically toss in a Star Fox game, a PS3, um, a PS Move controller, um, among some other things like little cutout creatures from the pixel junk world and um, water and I don't know. They basically are trying to like make this soup. So, um, the soup... That's the whole game. I know. You but are it's the quirky. soup company. Yes, I know. But you said they were making soup like it was a bad thing. I don't get the fact that they put a Star Fox game and a PlayStation in there when it's not coming out for PlayStation and it's not a Star Fox game. <laughs> Because they're weirdos like me. It's coming out for Steam. It's coming out for PC. Like maybe it's going to come out for it? Super Nintendo. <laughs> why, why would you put like? Are you? Listen, there was a Dreamcast game released. Okay, we can get a Super Nintendo game released. <laughs> it's 
It's the year 2014. We can do what we want. <laughs> Uh, anyway, the game is a 2D platformer, um, kind of like Starbound or Terraria, where um, you build a soup empire and destroy the competition. Can you call it Soup Plantation? Soup Plantation. I don't know that you can name your Damn. empire. I'm sorry. Uh, the game will have split-screen co-op and um, will release first on Steam and then eventually on Mac and Linux. So Interesting. It's not coming to PlayStation? That's it has not said and all that I tried to look it up is it coming because a lot of times pixel junk has been coming to PlayStation first first yeah. right and um, it says nothing about it in any of the stories that I can see okay. although they are bringing like an ultimate uh, pixel junk or something to the PlayStation Four. yes shooter correct mm -hmm. so that I just found that interesting that they threw that into the soup the PlayStation 3 and stuff and well, it has it, the soup not broth is your base, so they have to put all those things as the base of the game <laughs> where they started, and then build from there. Yeah. Okay. Soup Empire. Uh, so the Powerpuff Girls are back in action in their new game, Powerpuff Girls Defenders of Townsville, which will head to Steam on March 14th for Linux, Mac, and PC. For the plane to go? You don't have to wait for the plane. Okay. That's why we got microphones. Okay. Uh, the developer, Radiant Games, describes the game as a Metroidvania. Wow. Uh, speaking of, yes. <laughs> we didn't even, we didn't even telegraph these stories. We're getting a lot of those these, uh, <laughs> these couple weeks. As soon as you said that in your story, I'm like, damn, he just took my whole story, but it's in another sad. way. <laughs> uh, it's uh, described as Metroidvania with flying superheroes and a heavy dose of action, and that's actually how... The developer described the game. Um, I thought that it reminded me a bit like Pixel Junk Shooter, mm -hmm. again, um, from the trailer, just looking at it. Um, Bubbles, Buttercup, and Blossom are all playable, and their voices are done by the actual actresses that voice them in the cartoon, which I thought was pretty cool. So they shrunk them down and shot them into steam? Ooh. Like they digitized them? But, but Like uh, Kane in uh, Robocop, where his soul is inside the computer? No. Oh, why not? But she, but she yells at him. You get a shot, and you get a shot, and you get a shot. <laughs> the Oprah Winfrey of the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> it was cute. I thought it was cute. Uh, the game has two modes that can change the graphics slightly: um, classic and modern. Um, and the game does not have a set price yet, so it's coming out soon. But one um, million dollars doesn't have for the first price. copy. Everybody else gets it for free. <laughs> so. Be that first Don't person. be the first one. <laughs> no, be that first person. Be that first one. We want to play it for free. <laughs> Go ahead. Your turn. I My want turn. to do that one. Red Goddess is up on Kickstarter and the side-scrolling action-adventure Metroidvania Word of the Week tech <laughs> game looks absolutely wonderful. Unfortunately, ding, ding, ding. You said the word of the day. Carrie can't play it because the amount of depth in the trailer is awesome. There's like 17 motion vector oh I can't think of the name it's not splines parallax scrolling that's it it's got all kinds of stuff there's stuff in the foreground that moves while you walk this way and stuff in the background that moves so it's what it's, trailer did you maybe I... it's not the it's like it's like little big planet like how the stuff Aww. in the background is and the stuff in the foreground is different and you move between them you're in like, it's a like my Kirby game that I'm not gonna yeah. be able to play Bastards. looks awesome it's super smooth um, there's a possession mechanic where you possess enemies and enter them like a door. <laughs> That's what it says. It shows the little guy going in, in the dude's head and then it's like a room. Like being John Malkovich or some crap like that. <laughs> it sounds awesome and I can't play it. I'll play it. There's rage and fear emotions that you shoot off into their own little people and they're playable. And a split character gameplay where you play as half of the character while having to deal with the other half. And they put that in there, deal with the other half. Deal. Which, which I'm wondering if that means like the other half of your character like goes off and what's a fire to these trees? You're like, no. Multiple personality I, disorder or maybe? something? I mean, it looks pretty cool. It's already been greenlit on Steam and the Wii U version is set at the $150,000 stretch goal. The game still has 31 days left to fulfill its $50,000 stretch goal and $15 nets you a copy of the game. Do you know where they're, how far away they are from their goal right now? 
Um, it just started. They only had like a couple thousand, I think. Okay. But they still have 31 days. Yeah. So probably like 29 by the time this airs. Interesting. Um, Toby's Island is looking for some help on Kickstarter. I had a question. Did Toby buy this island? No, he ran away. It's a sad story. It's a very sad story. Toby. Yes. Ran away okay. from his abusive father, who sure. blames him for killing his mother during childbirth. Wow, this is like finding of Isaac like, type shit. Sad, like, this, like it's it's really sad. Like, I heard that, I was like, are you kidding? Like, that's the name of this game. All right, all right, keep going. Um, so, anyways, um, the game. He so he comes onto this island and uh, befriends all these monsters. Um, and the game's going to include fishing, farming, expanding your settlement, and collecting monsters who can fight other monsters. So it's kind of like a cross between Pokemon, Harvest Moon, Rune Factory, and Terraria all in one, which wow. basically is every single game that I love, which basically <laughs> means that you just made the ultimate game for me. <laughs> now, if they put that in the Nom Nom game, you could make a company that makes soup out of that. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. <laughs> um, so I, I love the graphics that they showed off in the Kickstarter video. Um, mm -hmm. I love the music that was in the background as well. So uh, the game is looking for a release of May 2015, but don't let that deter you because it's only a year away. It's really not that bad. Right. Um, $10 CAD, which is Canadian money, um, gets you a copy of the game, which is about $9 US. Um, they are looking for $20,000, which is 18000 US dollars. Uh, they still have 21 days to go, and they have about 7,000. Um, I'm definitely hoping... Hoping? Hoping. I'm hoping. We'll go with it. That's opening. a new word today. Um, I'm definitely hoping that they get backing, um, because it just it just looks and sounds like a game that I just would love to play. Um, and then if they can get funded and then add some stretch goals, they're going to add some more mini games like 10 pin bowling and stuff. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, it sounds, I just, it sounds awesome. Um, they can add more backstory and um, some other modes and stuff. So definitely check them out now. I've already backed them and you can also vote for them on Steam Greenlight. So do it! Greenlight them. I like it. Treachery in Beatdown City is a Kickstarter that kind of looks like they took the CJ version of Double Dragon and mixed in RPG fighting mechanics. So you, down. you can walk in real time and punch garbage cans and stuff to get health and pick up items. Pew, pew. But when you go into battle, it they said it's like... Um, like turn-based? Like turn-based, but you pick like three moves. So they're kind of like combos. So you pick the three different moves you want to do. Mm -hmm. And then during the game, you'll learn a bunch of move sets and stuff like that. And you can always like mix them up and stuff like that. So that sounds pretty cool. Like techniques and stuff that you learn. Yeah. <laughs> And the big draw for this game is they don't just have generic dudes in this game. Generic dudes, they not have me and Jimmy? A, no, they have a diverse <laughs> collection of characters of different races and genders. The playable... There's three, more than two genders? Well, there's two. <laughs> there's three playable protagonists. There's Lisa, a Puerto Rican woman who's in the police academy for forensic science, who also practices boxing and MMA. Okay. Brad, a light-skinned Spanish-Mexican who was born in Texas, who's also a professional wrestler, who I will play because he does professionally wrestling moves on people, which would be awesome. Like DDT dudes. And That's just... Big that. boot. Yeah. That's your game right there. Elbow off the top rope. <laughs> Make your own top rope, whatever. Maybe he could carry around ropes so he could jump off the top rope. They should add that. That'd be cool. <laughs> That'd be like an item. You put it down, you jump off. Be great. Yeah. And the third protagonist is Bruce, a Jamaican stockbroker with a love of Asian culture and martial arts. So crazy. Interesting. Interesting. I like what they did. They didn't just go, hey, we're going to make a generic game. And they're like, no, we're going to make all different cool stuff. That is cool. Uh, unfortunately, there's only four days left by the time you see this, and the team needs a pretty big push to reach their $50,000 goal. So if you can't help, you should head on over right now and pledge because 15 bucks gets you a copy of the game. And don't wait. Don't wait. Do it. Because you quick, only quick. have... Only a couple days. Yeah, four days, like I said. That's all you got. Don't forget. Don't forget. Naughty Dog lost the great writer this week as Amy Hennig, who served as director and writer for three Uncharted games. Three best ones. Or the only three released. Was <laughs> like, oh, while she was in the middle of Working on the fourth one. 
Now she's the one that's making her own game on Kickstarter. Is that right? I think so. The um the historical one. I tried to find more stuff, but I also tried to find more stuff about this story, and it gets like weird. Like nobody's saying why she left. Some people were saying she left. Some people were saying she was let fired go, yeah. or well, not fired, like let go. Um, so it's that would be fired. Well, but in nicer terms. Yeah, but you know <laughs> they didn't say like you're fired. Like it's not Vince McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> like it wasn't like one of those things. I don't think. Um, They're not it's, saying. It's just weird that she would leave in the middle of a project, especially when she's done the three, three previous Uncharted. Right. You'd think she would do the fourth, which now that sucks because it kind of makes me wonder what the hell is going to go on with the fourth Uncharted, since you know she was probably a big part of why Uncharted one, two, and three were so good in the first place. Probably can't yeah. have a good video game story without a good video game story writer. It doesn't work that way. Very true. After 19 years, Sony is bidding farewell to their American CEO, Jack Trenton, who, let's be honest, was a pretty good face of their company, at E3 especially. Um, he always seemed a little... I don't know if uneasy is the right word, but... He like did in a, the spotlight? He did a good job presenting, but I always got the feeling like, you know... Not that he didn't want to be there, but he was kind of like nervous. Yeah, but some people, like, he's but I kinda like more behind-the-scenes kind of guy. I kind of like that, that he'd do that, and he still kind of seemed nervous, and he was still doing it anyway. Yeah, he seemed um, kind of nervous, but he was good. Of course, he kind of pales in comparison to the almighty Kevin Butler, but as far as real people <laughs> goes, hey, he yeah, was pretty yeah. good. Sony Network Entertainment International COO Sean Layden will take his place and he has mighty big shoes to fill, and I guess we'll find out just how well he does at this year's E3. Yep. I'm wondering if they'll make him speak, or if they'll just bring in somebody else. Any word on where Jack's going, or mm, is he just just? I didn't write it just down. Leaving. And didn't see it. Just gone. So, but he's been there 19 years. So, hey, pretty good. New chapter for him, I guess. to see how the new guy does. Good luck. Uh, Under the Ocean is a game that just came out for, well, it has not just came out, but it um, is out on Steam Early Access and just caught my eye. Um, basically, you are shipwrecked on a tropical island. Um, of course, it's always tropical. It's not like... This game follows another game. Follows another game? Yeah. This is part two to a different game. Yes. Under... So I, under the I know vegetation? What, I know what it is. And like, I... It has to do with plants. Yeah. It's... Under the jungle. Into the jungle. I, I don't remember what the it is. The Lion King. It was in the store and now I don't remember what it is. Jungle sleeps tonight. Shut up. <laughs> jungle predators. No. <laughs> jungle fever. Not in the jungle. <laughs> Um, anyways, you are shipwrecked on a tropical island where you must um, survive, craft, explore, and eventually, hopefully, uh, find your way off the island and back home. Under the jungalos. <laughs> what? Jungalos. <laughs> what is a jungalo? They're like jugalos, but they live in the jungle. <laughs> or a gigolo? <laughs> Not gigolo. They're insane clowns. The bungalow? They're insane clown posse people who only live in the jungle, so <laughs> they're jungalos. <laughs> what do you think? Under the jungle. That's bad. <laughs> it's not mean. They just um, don't live where there's TV and stuff. But they so, drink a lot of Fago. It's okay. <laughs> That's it, a big it, thing it, in high it school. Gets, it gets like shipped to them on rafts. <laughs> kind of like the deck type. From their jungle <laughs> brethren. A deck type episode from Mythbusters? Sure. Um, so anyways, you're going to cut trees, find ore, build a house and weapons uh, to obviously hope to kill and feed yourself. Um, you can hurt yourself, so, um, like, you can catch your foot on a rock and stuff, so then you have to try Ow. and um, make... Band-Aids? Or aloe... Adhesive like, strips? Yes, or get aloe <laughs> to, like, heal yourself. Um, Can't use Band-Aids. They have to be adhesive You know, strips. you can make a variety of things, and then you can kind of interact with them. So um, they talked about in one of the trailers how you could make a spear, and then you could make dynamite, and then you could attach the dynamite to the spear so that it blows up. Has this been you... game coming a long time? This is, this is patch number nine. I thought we talked about this like a long time ago. We might have. I mean, this like, I, it looks like 2012 it's, or something. It looks like it's been out since June or July. It's on patch number nine right now um, in the alpha phase. I remember the spear dynamite thing now. 
Do you? Yeah. See, I thought I, it was familiar and I couldn't remember. I saw the screenshots and I thought that game looked really familiar. And then they're like, oh, this is like the not really sequel to our other game under the Jungalos. And then, <laughs> not Jungalos. <laughs> and, and I was like, I'm like, maybe I'm thinking of that other game, but maybe I'm not. Because there was a lot of water in the one from before with the spear and the dynamo. I don't know. Uh, well, this I don't know, but this is the ninth patch of its alpha. Um, they are currently in the process of making the game more 3D due to player feedback. Um, I guess some people, because you go left or right, so it's kind of like a side stroller. Yeah. Um, but you go left or right no matter what. So whether you're going north, south, east, or west, you're going left or right. Oh, that's weird. So a lot of people were getting confused. A lot of people didn't understand their maps and stuff. Like, they just just wasn't working. So they're doing a massive update um, to alleviate that and fix that. Um, I thought the game looked pretty interesting um, and something that I would want to play. Um, I think... I have it on my wish list right now. Um, I think I'm definitely going to wait until the next patch comes out once they get the 3D and stuff figured out. Um, hopefully I can still play it if it's 3D. You should just make it like Friday the 13th for the <laughs> um, NES where you just, there's a road and you press up and your dude goes doot, 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 up the road and now you're going north. No, yeah, but people hate that. I don't hate that. But I'm, you're the I'm okay with one that. of the select few. <laughs> I'm just a weirdo. So, um, it, it definitely looks interesting. Definitely looks like something I want to play. Um, just waiting for the update so that um, it's a little bit more polished. And then uh, eventually, shortly, hopefully, it's going to go into beta. Oh, okay. So right now so it's, it's like only an alpha. alpha. Yeah, it's a Steam Early Access and Alpha. And I think it's nine ninety nine. I think, to buy the game. It's not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. All right, YouTube, what better day to release Goat Simulator than April 1st, 2014? I don't know why you're obsessed with this game. Oh, yeah. The team over at Coffee Stain Studios game. has even added a new lick mechanic. You have this long goat tongue, and it sticks to so everything. Gross. So you just lick stuff. So like like a sticky hand from, yes. the, from the store? It's totally like a sticky hand. It's so gross. It's impossibly strong and impossibly sticky. Um, so <laughs> you can chase a man with an axe swinging over your head like a propeller. You can... With your tongue or your tail? Yeah. No, your tongue. You stick it with your tongue with the sticky hand. Bring it back and you start running and it'll like... It's gravity and physics, so it'll start like swinging. You can chase people with it. You can move a bench. You can just like sticky tongue a bench and like help people move it. Or you can even like lick a hammer and maybe try to help somebody hammer some nails in and probably kill them in the process because, <laughs> you know, have you ever tried to lift a hammer with your tongue and then try to hammer a nail while it's attached to your tongue? <laughs> pretty sure you're not going to do too well and I'm pretty sure a lot of people around you are going to die. <laughs> Which would be awesome. And the whole point of this game is for it to be funny. You can pre-order this awesome game born out of a game jam and a dream for $9.99 at their website, goatsimulator.com. And you even get early access to the beta when it's available. So weird. Remember, the game started as a joke. Like, oh, no. they made the game as a joke and then eventually had to put a business plan together because they were like, oh, so many shit, people actually wanted the internet wants this. We didn't think that was going to happen. Crap. We want goat simulators. Well, because it's funny. And I mean, the goat can die and everything. You can like toss him off buildings, and he's like, ah. <laughs> um, Pierre Solar HD is finally coming to light this spring. Um, it's the remake of the Sega Genesis RPG game that was funded through Kickstarter back in 2012. Um, and saw some delays last year, mm -hmm. so um, they had some issues. Uh, but it is now coming. Um, a new trailer was released showing off the shiny new look, um, and I definitely cannot wait to play. Uh, Watermelon is aiming for a launch in April for the uh, PS4, Xbox One, Wii U, PS3, Xbox 360, Ouya, Android, PC, Mac, and Linux. Did you say Xbox One? Xbox One. Xbox. Oh, Xbox. For a minute there, I thought you meant the original Xbox. Because you wrote a one instead of writing it out like Microsoft does. That's the problem when you name your product one after you've had more than one. <laughs> you confuse the shit out of people. Well, nobody else was reading my story, so Xbox I put the Xbox first. One. <laughs> Xbox Junior. So um, they're also hoping that a 3DS version um, will become available, although it will probably be, you know, after right. um, it releases. So I definitely cannot wait to get my nostalgia on and play. You can get the Genesis one. Is it still for sale? I don't know. 
It was expensive though, right? It was. Like 80 it bucks. was. Yeah. Well, think about how much money it costs to make like a cartridge-based game now. Right. True. And program it and all that other stuff. So. Very true. Very true. It's not like it's that really expensive when you think about the manpower it takes to do that. There came an Echo is taking oh. its voice-controlled oh. real-time tactical strategy game and adds in gesture control to bring it to the Xbox One and what else? The Kinect. That means you'll be in control of your very own Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Will, make it so. You can yell at him and stuff like that. <laughs> and just think. You'll... Xbox doesn't talk to me, so. I know. You'll finally have a badass game to use your Connect with. Uh, I can't say that I blame them for trying this out. Hopefully it adds something cool and different to the final product, considering it already had voice control, adding gesture, just, you know, makes sense. I mean, you're already adding voice. You could add eyeballs. Toe control. I don't know. Go go nuts. <laughs> what? You know, hey, test out. Use all, your knee. You know, your elbow. Whatever. All kinds of technology. You know, <laughs> your heart rate. Whatever. Uh, and this is all thanks to Intel's additional funding and support with their Real Sense technology for the gestures. With the funding, the team was able to add extra programmers, QA, languages. Um, a bunch of people were. I don't know if they were mad, but a bunch of people were kind of like, why did you need our help kickstarting this if you were going to, Intel is going to give you money? And they were like, well, A, it's because, you know, we made the game and then Intel came and said, hey, do you want money and use this to like show off our technology? Right. So. They came in, they came in after the fact. It wasn't, yeah. and the money it wasn't going, on top of. The money is going to add more to the game. So I don't understand right. why these people are So they are still angry. needed the, the money to finish the game to begin with. Yeah. And it's getting more languages, and they brought in, like, extra QA stuff, and, you know. It's not like Intel only funded, like, a little tiny gesture piece of the game. Like, the actual money is going to fund more pieces and parts of the game as a whole. Right. So that, that's cool. I was surprised they did that. Interesting. Though no thing actually said Xbox One, which was weird. I found that odd. The only thing that said it was OXM Magazine. But then in the copy of the story, they never mentioned Xbox One or Kinect. But the only thing that everybody knows that does gesture control is the Kinect. Or the weirdo thing for the PC. The Leap. The Leap. Um, another batch of games has made it past voting and has been Steam greenlit. Games like Crawl, uh, Doom and Destiny... Fleisch and Cherry and Crazy Hotel, which you talked about um, in the oh, story yeah, that's last that year. 1930s one. Yep. Mm -hmm. The I black like and white. Yeah. It's got scan lines. Um, I like scan lines. Grow, My Lands, Paper Dungeons, Prison Tycoon Alcatraz, um, Red Goddess, which you just talked about. Um, I want to roll. And Telepath Tactics, um, which we actually backed on Kickstarter last year, um, have all made the cut to come over to Steam. So you, you can. Say Check. On fire. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> it's not Space Jam. <laughs> it's not NBA Jam. NBA Jam. Space Jam. Come on. <laughs> Boom shakalaka. Totally different. Space Jam has Bugs Bunny, Michael Jordan. <laughs> NBA Jam's, I don't believe, has Michael Jordan. It still has basketball has in it. Scotty I was kind of close. And somebody else. Is that the one with the, with the, with the weird heads, right? The it has character. codes where you could have big heads. Yeah, the character. Yeah. Mortal Kombat characters. Uh, anyways, you can check out the full list on Steam now and then, you know, get ready for some more backlog games. Yes. All the ones Well, that they I have, have to play. come, just because they're green light, it's, you can't buy them yet. Yes. So, well, I actually have the beta of Telepath Tactics, so. That's the good thing about Steam green light. It gives you, like, yes. a waiting period. Sometimes longer than you want. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes you're like, yay! And then they're like, I'm still 2017. Waiting for one of the original games that Steam greenlit to, uh, to release. Greenlit or Kickstarter? Both. <laughs> well, I know Kickstarter, but which greenlit game are you looking for? You um, Stardew Valley. Who? Stardew Valley. It was like Is that a Harvest Moon. By James for... Duvall? No. Like a, like a um, Harvest Moon for okay. PC. Okay. Cool. And I'm still patiently. I'm sure they're patiently, patiently working waiting. on it too. Be nice if you would update your fans on a status. Yes. Are you ready to poop your pants? No. Get some pens. 
<laughs> the latest trailer has dropped for the creepy ass Soma game by Amnesia Developer Frictional Games. And they're showing just a small fly through of some of the worlds, no gameplay, but it's the voiceover that's creepy as hell. Who is it done by? The people in the spaceship that you are just casually overhearing as you just see. But you don't know the, who the voice actor is? No. Okay. But one of the quotes is, it's not my fault if people keep killing themselves. It's not my fault if people keep killing Great. themselves. Great. It already looks like you're Pretty in much a, you're going to die. Yeah. It already looks like you're in an abandoned by spaceship. Yourself. And it's your fault. And I don't you're think you're, yourself. I don't think you're by yourself because there's people there. Like scientists. But it's going to be your own fault that you die. Hello, janitor. Hello, scientist. Um, I don't know what the hell's going on in this game. The trailers <laughs> have been freaking weird. Some of them freaking have been weird. live action. This one is, I believe, the first one that shows actual gameplay footage. But it's just a fly through so there's no it's not really a game yeah you're not really playing but environment through footage i don't know what you call it and we still have a long road ahead for us as it doesn't release until 2015 it has a similar logo to routine as well which is a another space horror game that's on steam Greenlight. Mm-hmm. last story last story last story we told you it was coming i told you it was coming she didn't believe me. I told you it was coming. It's I been officially announced. The seven foot tall ass kicker known as Shaquille O'Neal is getting a new video game. Shaq Fu, A Legend Reborn. And the internet is going to make it a reality. They're talking Streets of Rage crossed with Devil May Cry, which sounds pretty badass. Um, lots of combos, lots of people being busted in the face with fists of Shaquille O'Neal-ness. <laughs> And they're talking dynamic destructibility. So you have my interest, Big D's developer. Um, they said it's going to be a brawler with some kind of upgrade path like Double Dragon, but the bar is already set really low from the previous game. So all they need to do is kind of step over that, and they made a game better. See this bar? You just kind of need to cross and it. And I mean, you have Shaquille O'Neal, so <laughs> the dude can step over bars pretty high. And that bar's really low. Is that when? Is that why he was in the green screen suit? That was why he was in the green screen suit, where you can see him with Shaquille O'Neal camel toe. Um, <laughs> I can't believe he's just said that. They said they want to make a game worthy of the legacy of Shaquille O'Neal. But the big question is, why is it on Indiegogo, and why do they need four hundred and fifty thousand dollars? <laughs> That's like two shoes for Shaquille O'Neal. Like, the dude probably has that money in his couch that just fell out of his pocket. He and, should, his, and his seat cushions? He, he should Where kill, we have 50 cents, he's got like 450000 in he quarters. He should kill O'Neal. <laughs> I mean, I get why they need, like, I get that you need money to fund a game, blah, blah, blah. Because I don't know. They need the money to pay him for endorsing it. But he's already doing, but it's his game. But they're, they're he, letting, I, I think, I think he, can, I think. The way the story reads, it kind of sounds like they came together and Shaquille O'Neal was like, I want to make this game. And they're like, we can make this game. And he's like, I want to make this game. And they're like, we want to make this game. And they came together like Voltron. <laughs> yes, but he's, he's lending his talents, so they have to pay him. I don't care. He sh this game, if anything that needed to be funded, it should have been like $1,000 on Kickstarter. If that. Not 450 I bet you if it was $1,000 on Kickstarter, it would already have like gone through the roof. Like People would have been nuts. But the fact that it's $750,000 on Indiegogo. Seven, okay, 450 or 750 450. Now, you're, now you're like a up million dollars. <laughs> $700 trillion. No. $450,000. <laughs> I don't know where I got seventy five. I, I don't uh, know where you got that either. I don't even see a 75 on this page. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Weirdo. So, I don't know. It started off really slow, and I think that's why. Because people are like, 450, what? I'm telling you, if it started really low, it would have already gone through the roof. It would have just, just... because it was... Just because the first one was so bad, they'd want to be... They'd think it was so funny and so hilarious that, yeah, they'd put money towards it, basically. But now that people are thinking that they're really trying to make a serious game, like, nobody cares. <laughs> 
No, I think people care. I think it's. I think nobody thinks they're going to hit that month that number. That money, yeah. So nobody's pledging. Even trying. If you would have made it really low, I think tons of people would have pledged, and it would have just. It would have done that number. I think they kind of screwed themselves. Well, we'll see. We still got thirty days or some garbage. On Indiegogo. Which means they get your money regardless. Yes. Uh huh. I think. Pretty sure. Though I believe there's some Kickstarter or some Indiegogos where you can specify that doesn't happen. I think maybe. But we'll see. Interesting. That's all for our Indeed. show this week. We hope you enjoyed it. Check out our store over at pixelarmor.com. We have awesome shirts. You should buy one. It's pretty cool. It helps support us. Awesome. We're going to... Megacon. Megacon. In Orlando, Florida. In two weeks. Two weeks. March. Two weeks. The week of March 21st. March 21st. There you go. We'll be there. If you're there, we're there. Come see us. Say hi. Yes. If you find us, um, we'll be we'll wearing, wearing t-shirts. Yep. Um, our t-shirts from our store right. and if you uh, ask us how you can enter to win a free t-shirt so by signing up for our mailing list basically yeah. pretty free simple easy to do uh, we'll be giving out i believe three shirts so friday saturday sunday i believe so yeah we're there blue shirts pixel armor logo on the back you'll yes. see us come find us i'll look like a goofball you already do yeah <laughs> Along with my family, who we're dressing up as well. Yes. <laughs> Fam free family marketing. Woohoo! Yay! Thanks for um, the big family. Check us out on our website at www.weeklygamingrecap.com and follow the stylings of Nicholas on Twitter at twitter.com slash wgamingrecap. You can also follow us on our Pixel Armor Twitter at twitter.com slash pixel armor. Lumber. Where I also have my own stylings. I'm like that uh, the Red Goddess Lady. I'm two different people. <laughs> you never know which one I'm going to be that day. Right, right. If you want to email us, you can <laughs> send us an email at the address show at weeklygamingrecap.com and we'll read it on the air. And if it's a question, we'll try to answer it. Or we can, I can't say that it'll be we can, the honest truth. We have but tablets. We'll try. We can look it up on the internet Google. for you. We could just type it in Google. You could just type it in Google. But if you want us to type it in for you, it's kind of like, would you Google that for me or just Google that for me or whatever the hell that website is where you send people and it like Googles it for them. You can just do that. We, we could be like that for you. We could be your Surrey. We could be your Googlers. We're internauts of the internet. Remember to rate, comment, share, and subscribe to us right here on YouTube. You can click that link. There's a link on the page in front of our face. That it's one, a, right it's there. A big, it's a big square. That one. Do it. Until next time, see, see you later. later.